Welcome to this presentation about conducting correlational tests using PSPP. The agenda for this presentation is simple. We are going to conduct a correlational test using PSPP. However, we will not do the entire test in one shot. We will break it up into steps. The steps will be importing the data, stating the hypothesis test, the rejection rule, and any supporting details, conducting the actual test in PSPP, and examining its output. After all that, we will present our findings in APA format and discuss some takeaways. Please import the data that you downloaded from the form. The previous video shows you how to import the data. After importing the data, make sure the column headings contain the variables. If they don't, re-import the data until you get it right. Before we can conduct the hypothesis test, we need to know the hypotheses. The null hypothesis states there is no correlation between the variables, or r is equal to zero. The alternative hypothesis says there is a correlation between hypotheses, or r is not zero. Remember, r is the APA symbol for the correlational statistic. Our rejection rule is the same as always. We reject the null hypothesis when p is less than alpha, where alpha is equal to 0.05. If p is greater than alpha, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. So what are we really asking? We're asking this. If we were to plot our data or our variables on a scatter plot, which one of these three diagrams would we get? Would we get the r greater than 0, as you see to the left? Would you get the r less than zero, which you see in the middle? Or would you get r equal to zero, which you see to the right? For this presentation, we're going to explore the correlation, if any, between savings and stocks. Our null hypothesis is that changes in one do not affect changes in the other. The alternative hypothesis says something like, well, if one goes up while the other one goes down, or if they go up and down in unison, r is not equal to zero. Now that we know everything we need to know, we can actually start writing down the hypothesis test. First off, we know the two variables. We're going to be looking into the correlation between savings and stocks, if any. Using the previous slide, we can write down the null and alternative hypotheses as you see here, and express the rejection rule. Finally, we are asking whether there is a correlation between savings and stocks. If so, what is its nature? And by nature, I mean, what is the value of R? To begin with the test in PSPP, click on Analyze and Bivariate Correlation. After clicking on Bivariate Correlations, you will see this dialog box. The first thing you want to do is to move the variables of interest over to the right-hand column. Afterwards, choose a two-tailed test and flag significant correlations. We'll talk a little more about this on the next slide. Once you've done all that, click OK. After clicking OK, you will see the results appear in a little matrix like this. This cell in the matrix is the intersection of stocks and savings. As you can see, the correlation coefficient is 0.28 it has a significance or a p-value of 0 0.000. This is a significant correlation and is italicized by PSPP. If you wish to visually confirm your analysis, you can use a scatter plot. To build a scatter plot, click on graphs and then scatter plot. A dialog box will appear. This is a scatter plot dialog box that will appear. Place your savings and stock variables in either the X or Y axis. For example, I just use the Y axis to be savings and the X axis to be stocks. Once done, click OK. Once you click OK, you'll see a scatter plot appear and you can draw a best fit line. In this case, you could see the line is shallow, sloping upwards or has a positive slope and that indicates a weekly positive correlation. And in this case, it matches roughly our weekly positive correlation of 0 0.28.
So this is just a handy way if you want to visualize your data and check your previous work. The write-up is very straightforward. You open with a level 2 heading stating the hypothesis test, followed by the hypotheses. Afterwards, you state that you calculated the correlational coefficient using PSPP and assuming an alpha of 0 0.05. You discuss whether a significant correlation emerged and present the results right here in a parenthetical comment. The parenthetical comment opens up with the R value and closes with the P value. Afterwards, you could sit there and state whether you rejected the null hypothesis and state your conclusion. So what are the main takeaways from this video? Well, there's a few. PSPP can perform correlations for you. That's a great thing. It's a very handy tool and better yet, it's fast. You can perform correlational tests by using the bivariate correlation option under analyze. Remember to flag your significant correlations and check the p-value. If you like, make a scatter plot. Visually confirm your results. Last but not least, we covered an APA example write-up. Make sure you follow that for your write-ups. And don't worry about correlations. They are not as tough as they seem. Good luck on your correlations and enjoy using PSPP.